What is up Sopranos fans, Kino here, and I am back with another Soprano log. Today we are looking at the second episode of the fifth season, Rat Pack. Now, Tony meets with Jack Masserone. Uh, Masserone is the person in charge of their construction projects. Uh, he's a civilian, not a mobster. Now, Jack gives him a painting of the famous Rat Pack, uh, which is the title of this episode. It's the group of Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., and others. Um, but what Tony doesn't know is that Jack has turned informant. Um, he's informing to the FBI. Uh, we see a meeting uh, with all the rats at the FBI headquarters. Ray Curdo is there. He actually recorded the audio from the meeting in the season four episode for all debts, public and private. So we hear Tony's speech about, you know, making some earners right here again. Uh, later on, Patsy informs Tony that the feds were following Jack. And they're not sure yet whether, you know, Jack has turned informant or if the FBI are just following him for now. Tony tries to feel him out. He has a meeting with Jack and, you know, he feels him all over for the wire. And is just trying to get a sense of if he's turned informant or not. Uh, but he really can't decide. You know, he struggles with it for a little while. There's even a great scene of him taking the picture of the Rat Pack that Jack gave him and putting it on the mantle. And he actually puts... Uh, the pictures of Jesus uh, next to the painting down, like facing down. It's a really striking image that, you know, he's putting up this image of this classic Hollywood American entertainment industry up and then putting down the picture of Jesus. Um, I think it's very symbolic of the show. But ultimately, he decides that Jack is probably an informant now. Jack said that Tony had lost weight, which it's very clear that he hasn't. So in his mind, that is... Uh, Jack just trying to play Tony off. So he decides to have Jack killed, and later on the FBI find him in the trunk of his car. Uh, meanwhile, Carmine Sr. passes away, um, and this is a good time as I need to bring this up, but I didn't know that the actor who played Carmine Sr. in real life is Tony Lip, who the movie The Green Mile is partially about. The, the character that Vigo, however you pronounce his last name, is playing is the actor who would later be Carmine Sr. So it's, that's an interesting detail. Um, but at the funeral, tensions arise between Johnny Sack and Little Carmine. Uh, we start to see the conflict over, you know, who's going to take over the family. Carmine senses that John, you know, is really respected amongst the Capos, um, and this really causes some resentment because he's worried that, you know, John will take over instead of him. Uh, so this is where we see that conflict really start to brew, which will be featured prominently this season. Uh, meanwhile, Tony's cousin, Tony Blundetto, um, is released from prison, played by Steve Buscemi, who had, at this point, already directed some of the episodes of The Sopranos. Uh, but Tony has a party at Vesuvio for him. All the gang is there, um, except Tony B's family, who is missing. Um, so while he was in prison, you know, his daughter ran away with a drug addict, and his ex-wife wants nothing to do with him. So Tony B is in a bad spot uh, when he gets out of prison here. Now, Tony really wants to bring Tony B back into the fold, and part of this is motivated by his guilt. Um, we really get the sense, even early on, that he feels guilty that his cousin went to prison and he did not. Uh, we'll learn more about the details of what happened later on this season, um, but there's a great scene where Tony is watching a Band of Brothers, another HBO show, and, you know, talking about soldiers in this life take bullets for each other and things like that. Uh, so we can see Tony does, you know, think that Tony B took the bullet for him and went to prison. Uh, but Tony B does not want to join the mob family. Instead, he wants to go straight and become a massage therapist. Um, he really got into helping people in prison, and he wants to continue to, you know, live a non-criminal life now that he's out of prison. Uh, so this obviously disappoints Tony, but he arranges to, you know, help him out with getting a job and everything. But we start to see tensions really arise between these two uh, when Tony B makes fun of Tony. Uh, in Tony B's eyes, you know, they're still cousins. They're still equals from when they were kids. Uh, but Tony says, you know, he's the boss now. Uh, so Tony B cannot disrespect him like that, especially in front of his men. Uh, meanwhile, Carmela and the girls have a movie night. They want to watch classic films and really kind of educate themselves on cinema. So they sit down and they try watching the movie uh, Citizen Kane. Now, they are not really into it. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a boring film for them. They don't have much to talk about. 
and they end up just, you know, talking about, you know, their personal lives instead. As someone who, you know, reviews classic films like this, I gotta say that a lot of times classic films are not the best when you're in a group. A lot of times people just want to have fun and, you know, they don't want to sit down and really have to think about what they're watching. It's just about an enjoyable experience. So even though I really do love classic films, I can understand in situations like this, um, this just might not be the place for them to watch a movie like this. Adriana is a part of this group, you know, she's a part of the wives, but she feels really guilty about being an informant. It's really starting to mess with her that she's living this double life, and she almost confesses uh, to the girls, but she ultimately decides to just run away and leave. Later, she's out at a club, um, and we're introduced to her friend Tina, who is actually the girlfriend of Mustang Sally all the way back in season three. So it's funny they brought that character back and now she's a friend of Adriana. But Adriana really starts to get upset with Tina when she sees uh, Tina flirting with Christopher and making all these sexual jokes and she can see that Christopher is attracted to her. So at the end of the episode, she actually rats on Tina for stealing money from her employer. She tells her handler about this and it's implied that they're going to you know, look into it and maybe arrest her. Uh, so she's, you know, in, in some sense, OK with being a rat. Um, if it helps take care of problems in her life. And, you know, this is her little bit of revenge and making herself feel better. Uh, so that is the episode Rat Pack. Uh, I'm excited to see where Tony B's story goes. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for the next Soprano Log coming soon. Thanks to all my patrons, I no longer have to fake invoices to buy my mink coats. Hunter, Tommy Smith, Abdallah Alamari, George Jones, Russell, Sean, Graham, Rooftop, Rico Bellic, Heart of Markness, Broccoli, Isaiah, Placenta Juan, Logan, and Clean.